Good afternoon, everyone. I just want to bring you a video message this afternoon. Um, I had a discussion the other day with a brother in Christ about some verses in the Bible. Uh, we, we, the discussion went to the thief on the cross, uh, which is in Luke uh, chapter 23, verses 39 through 43. And we discovered many, many things, many nuggets there. I'd like to share just a few, but um, I'll read them and I'll go back over it and we'll, we'll discuss what we, what we saw. But it was really encouraging and it's just exciting. It's exciting news. The gospel never gets old. So, <clears throat> first, uh, chapter 23, verse 39 of Luke, it says this. It says, One of the malefactors which were hanged railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Dost, thou, dost not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due rewards of our deeds. But this man hath nothing done amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said, said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. And those were the two verses that we were discussing. Verse 42 and says this again, And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me. He said, Lord, remember me. Remember me when thou comest future tense well now cometh into thy kingdom and jesus said unto him verily present tense pay attention to this present tense i say unto thee today shalt thou be with me in paradise as you can see you can see the simplicity of the gospel revealed on the cross it's got such good news it's just i i cannot help uh to rejoice about that because it is a concrete promise that he told the thief. The thief was a lifelong criminal probably. Don't know, but he, he, got, he got himself hung on the cross for what he did. You didn't see the thief naming each and every sin that he ever did? No. You didn't see the thief, you don't, you don't see the thief bawling and squalling at the altars. Of course, they're on the cross, I knew that, but one simple change of mind he had because you know he had a change of mind you know he had a, a repentance quote quote repentance moment of of going from unbelief to belief because listen to what he says in verse um 40 but thou but the other answering rebuked him saying does that do, does not thou fear god seeing thou art in the same condemnation so he knows i thought fear god this is jesus he is god do you do you not fear him and he just said, you know, and that's all he said, remember me. So the gospel is such good news. And I'm wondering, I'm wondering why do we not hear the gospel in the pulpits of America today? When I, when I mean gospel, well, I mean the death, the burial, the resurrection for the remissions of all your sins, past, present, future, or the forgiveness of all your sins, or the removal of your sins of past, present, future. We just don't hear that. I'm asking the question. Why not? Because this is where it all starts. It all starts with the gospel. If, if you're not preaching the gospel, the death, the burial, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, then every other message you, you put after that, it, 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 it's going to be a, it's going to be wrong. It's not going to be, it's not based on the true foundation. It's not based off the true, the one true gospel of Jesus Christ, which is, which is according to first Corinthians chapter 15, Verses 3 and 4, where Christ um, Christ died for your sins, according to Scripture. He was buried, and He rose again, according to Scriptures. That is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it almost seems like we have a, a covering or a veil, or, or, or whoever's in the pulpit are being blinded about the gospel. They just don't want to preach the gospel. They, they may preach half of it. They may say, well, you know, we're sinners, you know, through Adam and... We didn't, we didn't know our fallen state. We didn't know the consequences of our fallen state, which is if we don't have a change of mind of who um, Christ is and what he did on a cross, we don't come at the end of ourselves, meaning I cannot save myself. I know you've heard me say this over and over, but the gospel never gets old to preach. We have to realize our condition, our fallen state, just like the thief on the cross did. And he just said, and we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. You know, he knows he'd done wrong. 
and he's looking for Jesus to be saved. He looked at him on the, right on the cross as this was taking place. And we have to recognize that our deeds will not save us. Our good deeds will not save us, nor will our evil deeds. You can't be, you, you cannot be, um, or, our, or will our evil deeds keep us out of heaven? That's irrelevant. Your deeds, what you do on this earth, good or bad, is irrelevant to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Christ died for this thief. That's why God designed, I believe, what he designed this, um, this scene where you see the two sinners and Jesus in the middle of it. You have one sinner by their free will. You notice, you know, the scripture says, um, when I be lifted up, I will draw all men to me. John 12, 32. Yes, he drew both of these folks to him. Even the one that railed on him, he drew them. The one that railed on Jesus had the choice to, um, to come to God for a Savior. Just like this other one did, the saved thief did. This, this guy got saved on the cross, on his deathbed. So I hope you find this encouraging. It's the simplicity of Christ revealed on the cross. It's simple, folks. Place your trust in Him today. I love you, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.